Good afternoon, friends. This is Sergey Kromchenko from Los Angeles, California. Currently, I work as an engineering manager of SDAT in UKA field. I've been for I've been for more than eight years. But today, we're talking about money again, specifically about why do people get twice less money in a certain company when they do specific amount of job and while they do same specific amount of job in a different company they get twice or even three times more money let's go so let's say you are working as the mid-level developer as most of you guys probably do and in the US you would make on average about 120 130 thousand dollars as the mid-level mid-level dev no matter if you're front-end back-end or full stack it's it's about an average and at, we have three levels of companies. L3 will be the company which would be a startup that has no money, they just started ramping up, they probably got some of their own money or maybe someone invested a little bit into them and they're trying to save as much as possible. They will probably uh, offer you seventy, eighty thousand dollars and maybe a lot of stocks on the top because they have nothing else to offer. The only thing they can they have is a stock, but it doesn't worth much. It's actually worthless at the moment because companies not even making any money, any money probably. So they'll be L3, and they pay the least amount of money when you do when you are a mid level. But let's go to L2. So now we're talking about well established startups such as one that I work for right now. Uh, at these companies, you will probably get that average that we're talking about, close to $120 and $130, uh, 120, $130,000 of dollars per year. And uh, that is because the company has money, the company has well-established business, but it's not an enterprise yet. It's not a top-level company on the market, which has huge income and ready in to invest into resources like you. But that will be L2. And then L1, that's actually a top of the market. Now we're talking about Google, Facebook, Amazon, Microsoft, etc. Those companies, as you know, they make the most money in the world and they are ready to, inv to invest into your resources, into the best resources on the market. But you will get uh, much less exposure you will get much less responsibilities, you will only do your job, which is quite no fun in my opinion, but you will get very stable pay, you will, you will get a higher pay, uh, possibly up to 160, 180, in some cases it could be even more, but it all depends on your level, you know, if you're mid, you could be right below mid, right above mid, on the way to senior, it all depends, but you will definitely get much more than L2 offers you. So. If you want to, the question would be, do you want to get responsibilities and learn a lot to become a big man in a company and make a difference? Or do you want to make a lot of money and not really care much about your job and do certain things that you want to do? That'll be the ma main question you should answer. Now, let's talk about the same story, but about QA position, QA engineers specifically. So QA engineers on average would make approximately $90,000 uh, in the US, it may be even between ninety and hundred thousand dollars, depending on your location. But I would stick closer to ninety. So L three will offer you sometimes even as low as forty five thousand dollars. That's like one of the lowest that our students from the from our QA bootcamp have received, but not necessarily have accepted. So that'll be L three because they don't have much money, and a lot of times they do not even pay, do not even try to pay anything to QA, but say hey. You want, you're, you want to learn something? Are you an intern? You have no experience? Come over and work for us for free uh, because you need experience and we need a free QA. But that's, that's not necessarily a good thing to do if you have no experience but you have a lot of skills. So if you are going for L3, expect to get something from 45 maybe, maybe up to 60. I would say that's the L3 uh, average. And then L2 will start probably right uh, over $60,000 and go up to 100 depending on where you at that would be for l2 the companies which do have money plus they do offer you a little bit of stocks and remember that l l3 and l2 those are the companies that give you the most responsibilities specifically l1 
and in most cases L2. That, that's the companies where you can do a lot of things that you've never done before. You can get a lot of responsibilities that no one would ever give you in, at L1 level, but you can get them at L2 and L3. And L3, oh, actually hold on, L1 now. The companies, they would pay you the most money. Uh, QA engineers, I know, you know at Salesforce, they at least for a full-time position, you're getting 130, if I'm not wrong, something around that. Uh, that's the least that you're gonna get as the full-time QA, uh, for a full-time QA position in Salesforce uh, in uh, San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, and in most of the other companies, that would be pretty much the same. For a mid-level, it would go 115, 20, 30. In some cases, it might be, even be up. It, it depends on your negotiation skills, your level, and on a, company need, a company's need to pull you in as soon as possible. But if you have no experience at all, or if you do have some and you wanna learn on improving skills, we have our QA Bootcamp, and I'll leave you a link right below. Feel free to sign up and check out the courses for manual and QA automation position that will be starting soon. Also, we do have a Telegram channel where you can see all the information we're posting here, as well as many more articles and information that we can simply not share on YouTube because of their algorithms. Please sign up for that. I'm going to leave a link right there below. And I want to thank you for your time. Today you have learned what you can make in the different companies from L1 to L3. If you do have any questions, don't forget to leave a comment below. And I will see you on the next video.